All of the storage that we've been working with so far, when we've been making our virtual disk, the storage itself has been the storage on the Hyper-V host. Well, let's think about this for a second, the way that it used to be and what we're trying to do with virtualization. In many times, in many cases, you would invest heavily into a SAN, a storage area network. And this SAN gave you storage to multiple physical machines. Now those physical machines were connected to the SAN through a fiber channel, fiber channel HBA or host bus adapter. This is basically the network that connected uh, the servers to the storage devices. And you would have a, a fiber channel switch in there like a brocade switch and get everything wired up and connected. And now you could share this storage device, this SAN, between multiple physical servers, giving LUNs or logical uh, uh, units off to each physical uh, machine. Now, normally what would happen is the physical machine would have its OS installed on a set of local drives and then would do all the storage to the SAN. Well, we wanna have that same concept today, only we wanna virtualize it and give our VMs access to shared storage like a SAN. And we do it pretty much the same way. Your Hyper-V host will have the physical connections of the fiber channel and the HBAs to the SAN. Then when you go into the Hyper-V uh, Hyper manager, what we wanna do is, is create a virtualized SAN so that these VMs can then use it. Well, I'm gonna show you how to make a virtual SAN, but something to keep in mind is, you know, connecting this up in your environment uh, is gonna be different uh, depending upon your SAN's manu you know, the manufacturer of your SAN. And so you wanna make sure you check with their specific information. Now, irregardless of the 7410 exam, um, we'll focus not so much on those manufacturer uh, criteria, of course, but on uh, what we're taking a look at here in the creation uh, of, of Fiber Channel. Uh, for our VMs to access that shared storage. So here's how you'll do it. You can see over here, there's a virtual SAN manager. And I'm gonna select it, and I'm gonna create a new uh, uh, fiber channel uh, for the SAN. Now, a couple of things to point out, that when this is set up, it, it, a, a Hyper-V host could be connected to multiple physical SANs. You might have a, a development SAN, you might have a production SAN. Well, when you connect these, they're gonna get different worldwide names. And that's what you see down here is the worldwide names and the ranges that we can use for those worldwide names when they make their network connections. In our case, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a fiber channel SAN and uh, we'll change his name here so that it's easy to identify. And we'll call this production SAN and say apply. Now, th there aren't any um, physical ports that I have connected to a, a, a real SAN. That's why I'm getting this message about that there's no actual ports for it. I'll say okay, and now that, that virtualized SAN has been created, if I wanna go into a virtual machine that I wanna have access to it, and go to settings. I can add a fiber channel adapter and then specify the SAN that I want that virtual machine to be able to connect to. If I need to, I can edit the addresses of the worldwide naming convention that's being used from the uh, connections that have been created with the SAN. And at this point, I can say apply and okay, and my virtual machine will now have access to the volumes on that physical SAN. This is more common today uh, as, as the, your virtualization environment grows, that you're gonna wanna have access to those large storage devices that you have on your network. So again, make sure you check with the manufacturer instructions for any details uh, in configuring the physical portion of the SAN for your Hyper-V host, and then you can go in and create the virtual SAN man with the virtual SAN manager, create the virtual SAN and give it to your VMs. One last stop for our storage is quality of service.